All right, guys, so the time is now for a showdown between the Empire, who's going to be led by Boris Toadbringer, and the Tomb Kings, who are going to be led by Setra the Imperishable atop his mighty War Sphinx. So without further ado, let's jump right into this match and have some fun. So as far as the strategy goes for this game, we're going to be going with a little bit of steel, a little bit of faith over here with the Warrior Priest, but more importantly, we are going to be bringing a ton of gunpowder. So in total, we do have three great cannons. One of them, of course, is going to be the Hammer of the Witches on the far side. We're just basically going to be gunning down the constructs and then hoping our great swords and Boris can clean up the rest of the chaff. So basically what you do is you bring the three great cannons, of course, on their own. They're going to be pretty good against constructs who shop you great bows, which you do see a lot against the Empire Cav. And then you get a Warrior Priest. So the Warrior Priest has an item called the Banner of the Eternal Flame, which gives 6% damage, uh, weapon damage overall, which isn't bad when you're looking at cannons. But more importantly, it gives fire damage. And all of the Tomb King's Lords are actually weak to fire. So let's actually go ahead and take a look. I think it's 22%. But if we look at Setra right here, Setra has so many damn abilities, but he does have the 25% uh, weakness to fire. So that's going to be pretty substantial, right? When that cannon fire is coming in and just burning him down, and it's generally pretty tough to take down Setra. He's a powerhouse of a unit. You can fight him with Karl Franz and Boris and use Demogriff Knights, but having the cannons and also knowing that it's a very open field map is going to be really, really nice here. So aside from that, we do have a front line that's a little bit mixed mashed here. We do have some spearmen with shields on the flanks. The center is going to be a little bit heavy metal. We do have two groups of great swords, and great swords actually do very well against the Tomb King's uh, infantry. Because pretty much all the Tomb King's infantry, a uh, Tomb Guard, you know, Nehekar Warriors, Skeleton Warriors, they all have fairly low armor piercing value. So if we look at the Tomb Guard here, they have 42 weapon strength, which is really good, right? So against Spearmen with shields or flagellants or anything like that, they're going to do a ton of damage. But uh, against Great Swords, their armor piercing is so low that we're going to be pretty durable here in the front line. In the middle, we do have the Sigmar Sons who are going to be holding Proud here, just uh, using their unbreakable status to really hold back the tide of the Tomb Kings because he has a very wide army. If you can see here, he has 1,245, and I only have 642, so a fairly elite army here from the Empire. For our caster, we're going to be going for battlefield control using the Nets of Amnitok to pin down the Constructs, and also we're going to be using the Baronis Time Warp. So the Baronis Time Warp is kind of a, well, it's a fairly offensive spell. So it does give 26 melee attack and also a speed buff. So if there's a big cav charge coming in, Boris is about to attack, you can give them that speed to chase, uh, to chase the targets. But more importantly, it's an AoE, uh, an AoE spell, right? So you're going to want to use that in the front line on the Great Swords and the Sigmar Suns to kind of juice those guys up and really turn them into lawnmowers against the Tomb King's troops. Uh, we got Boris, of course. He heals himself. He's a pretty good choice. His Shafti Great Bows are very common in this matchup. So I think having the self-healing, especially if you're going to be going with a different lore of magic other than life, is very important. On the flanks, we have two groups of Empire Knights who are going to be disrupting, causing some pressure, just cycle charging Tomb Guard and going after the back line. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully the cannons can do some work. So for my opponent's forces, you can see here, we have been shooting at the Ushapti Great Bows, but we haven't gotten the most damage yet. But in just a second here, if uh, memory serves, there will be some fat damage coming in. But he just has a super wide army. It's going to be Tomb Guards and Skeletons in the front line, a couple Spears in the back. And he does also have uh, the Blessed Legion of Demonetization somewhere in here. I think they're around here, Skeleton Archers, and it looks like here. So the Blessed Legion of Fox is what they're actually called. They're pretty good in this matchup. They do send with the Armor of Great Swords. He can get some damage on them. He can focus fire down my Lord. I like that pick quite a bit. Setra up on the Sphinx is definitely going to run some shop on my great swords. The Ushapti Great Bows are designed to take out my cav and lords and things like that. So definitely a solid army. The only thing I would recommend is maybe getting a couple groups of carrion. And I also think Setra on the Sphinx is a little bit risky. But granted, you don't see the triple cannon play as much. But uh, I think getting a couple groups of carrion or, uh, you know, skeleton horsemen to harass the back line and disrupt my cannon line would be very valuable. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into this match and uh, have some fun. So first things first, you can see these Ushapti Great Bows are the focus of my initial volleys, and they are just getting pounded by the Empire Powder. The Hammer of the Witches and the Great Cannons are doing a ton of damage, which is good. And arguably, I could have gone after Setra first, but I wanted to just fully eliminate these Great Bows, take them out of the picture, and then from there, use Boris and my Nets to really do some good work there. My Empire, not Empire Knights in the meantime just flattened these Tomb Guard. Oh my goodness, look at these Tomb Guard. They just got run over. Now, we didn't kill any models, but we did about 15, you know, 20% HP damage on those guys with a single charge from the Empire Knights. And the same thing's going to be coming in on the other side as well. So these Empire Knights serving a pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff here against these uh, Tomb Guard and these very squishy Tomb King's infantry, all of whom have like you know 50 armor here. These Skeleton Spears have 10 armor, and I think standard Skeletons have like something like 10 or 30 or something. I can't remember, but anyways, the front line fight's about to be underway. Unfortunately, Setra is going to get swiggity swooty into my front line a little bit. Looks like he's going to be going after the Sigmar Sons, and he's going to do some good damage. Setra is quite powerful. The Wrath of Petra is going to be going down, so there's going to be some heavy damage coming on and. He's going to be relatively, you know, free range until I decide to send in my uh, my big guns here in the back of the cannons and target him down. In the meantime, these Ushafti Great Bows are very low. They're down to seven models. They're crumbling. Just wanted to get them a little bit lower here in the back, though. Unfortunately, I do get caught up with my Empire Knights. They get focused down by the Chosen of the Gods, and I leave them a little bit too long, and that's going to bite me in the butt, but they're pretty cheap anyways. Great Swords in the front are going to be performing quite well against the Tomb Guard here. I do have the Baronis Time Warp, which was originally hitting these guys, but I did move out of the radius here. Now we're going to be going after Setra. So Boris is going for the kill here. The Light Wizard is going to be helping out. Baronis Time Warp is affecting, uh, it looks like just the Wizard. Yeah, 
as well as these uh, Sigmar Suns here. But now we're going to be getting a massive cannon volley. You can see here the great cannons are going to be shooting in and just doing tons of damage against Cetra, and it's really going to add up pretty quickly here. In the meantime, though, great swords are holding on the flanks. Uh, they're holding. They're just you know buzzing through. They have 17 kills. These skeleton spears are going to start falling rather quickly. And my other group of knights has gone up and around the flank, and we're going to be piling into the back line, shutting down the skeleton archers because they have a ton of potential to do damage to my great swords as well as my leadership. So very very scary stuff. Cannons are still online, pretty happy. It looks like my opponent did use a Vortex Bell back here. The Great Cannons are just going to be bombarding Cetra. You can see Cetra is pretty low, and the cool thing about using the Light Wizard as both a, you know, basically a spam bot for the bonus Time Warp, as well as the Nets is, Cetra can't really get away. So knowing Cetra was taking Cannon Fire, I just kind of butter him up, put him in place, and let Boris fight him Fisticuffs, which is already, you know, a good situation. Boris is a very powerful armor-piercing duelist, but again, Cetra can give the business right back, but it's really going to allow me to get that massive Cannon Fire. Sigmar Suns, in the meantime, are just holding back the Tides of the Tomb Guard here. Definitely doing a pretty good job. Very, very messy affair. In the back, the Empire Knights have gotten into the Cookie Jar. They're going after the Skeleton Archers. They're able to strike one of these groups pretty good, but my opponent does have the King Nikesha Scorpion Legion back here. And he does also have another group of Ushapti Grapevos who are basically just destroying my Empire Knights. So good stuff with those guys. So they're just going to be cycle charging around, trying to get back and through. And I know that my front line is going to be faltering. I mean, just from the sheer numbers he has, these Great Greatswords are doing well. They're you know, trading relatively efficiently with the Tomb Guard. Granted, Cetra was in here as well, so they're probably going to be losing that one. But they're still doing pretty well, right? 40 kills here, a little bit more than the Tomb Guard. The other Greatswords on the far side are up to 45. And here we do get Cetra. So Cetra does fall. We're able to get him down with Boris and the cannon fire. Of course, that fire damage, just a massive multiplier. And that's kind of a, man, that's an intense fall there for the Sphinx. Very sad looking. Anyway, so Boris is going to be falling back. He's taking a lot of damage from the Skeleton Archer. So even though I was able to get a good trade there, I still do take a ton of damage, right? And he does get through with some Tomb Guard. They're able to break through my front line. Of course, my force is very narrow. So the Empire Knights are going to be charging in. Boris Toddbringer coming in with a steel chair on the back of these Tomb Guard. And we're basically just trying to pre prevent them from getting back to the cannons. Now that Cetra is dead, I don't really need the fire augmentation too much on the Great Cannons. So I have sent the Warrior Priest forward. He's going to be giving the Grand Hammer of Faith and Sigmar and all that other good stuff to these guys. Or the Grand Hammer of Sigmar and the Shield of Faith. So right here, we're going to be using another Bronos Time Warp, giving that fat melee attack buff, putting Empire Knights up to 52. And also we're getting the fire damage. Not that it's terribly pertinent against the, uh, or at all against the Tomb Guard, right? But it looks really cool. So as far as our other troops on the battlefield go, we've switched all three of our cannons onto the Chosen of the Gods. So we need to get basically take these guys out, right? This is the last powerhouse unit that he has that can really take down Boris Toddbringer, so I really need to put that guy down. Sigmar Sons are fighting, they got two models left, the Great Swords here are up to 54 kills, and the Spearmen with Shields are pretty healthy, but kind of running out of reserves, and there's still a massive tide of Tomb Kings coming in, so this battle, even though the Bounce of Power is in my favor, is far from over. So these Great Swords are going to be pushing into the back a little bit, going after the uh, Bowmen, because uh, this is a lot of damage. I mean, here we got 60 Skeleton Archers, we got 83 right here, and the Blessed Legion of Demonetization is still in great shape, right? So that's a little bit scary. The cannons are still shooting at the Chosen of the Gods. We almost have them down. They're at five models. I really need to get rid of them. And I actually sent all my reserves forward, right? Because my opponent he got his forces up here. He did a good job pressuring through, even though he had lost his constructs and a lot of his high-value targets. But the uh, King Nikesha Scorpion Legion is getting back here. He has a couple guys, just a massive wave of Tomb Kings coming in, and he summons some Ushapti when I send my reserves forward. So very, very good timing from him. He's Ushapti. Oh man, that must be terrifying. Just being like, all right, guys, this looks great. All their con- Oh my god! <laughs> the construct just coming in from out of nowhere. So these Ushapti are going to be decapitating my cannon crew. Definitely not fun stuff. But I do have Boris nearby and the Light Wizard and also some Empire Knights. So they're going to be charging in for Sigmar to rescue these uh, Empire cannon crews, which is always very thematic and cool. So the Empire Knights coming in with the charge. Getting a charge bonus of 48, which isn't huge, but you can see a couple of the constructs do die on the initial impact. And of course, Boris Toddbringer has massive armor piercing value, so he should be able to pressure those guys. However, now we're in the kill box. The Blessed Legion of Demonetization, as well as the other Skeleton Archers, are now in range to start shooting my cannons. And it's looking a little bit messy, and yeah, you can see the Bounce Power actually going back towards the middle a little bit. Great Swords here in the back are chewing through the waves and waves of Tomb Guard. They're up to 90 kills, definitely paying their dues. 51 on the Spearman with the Shields. Uh, they're able to outtrade the Skeleton Spear simply because they just have better stats. 20 and 42 compared to 14 and 30. But the Skeleton Archers are the name of the game, basically. They're just paying a ton of pressure here on Boris. And I think my Empire Knights are going to be scooting out. I do detach my Cannon crew, so... Excuse me. <clears throat> need to drink some water real quick. All right, we're good. So anytime these Cannon crews are compromised, it's a really good idea to grab, you know, the Great Cannon... Or click on the Great Cannon and detach the crew and run them away. Because otherwise the crew will stand and fight to the bitter end. You'll lose Cannon pieces. But this prevents you from actually losing the Cannons themselves and also allows you to come back and rearm later. You shopped, you have chased off most of my troops though, so that hold there, I could have left Boris there, but I didn't want them to get tied up in the Skeleton Spearmen, and I also wanted to kind of uh, take the pressure away from the cannons themselves. So Boris goes back up in the air, he was taking so much firepower from those archers, but in the back it's going pretty well, the Great Swords with the Baronis Time Warp and the uh, Spearmen up to 38 movement speed, and the Great Swords themselves up to 35, we're able to get on these Tomb Guard, and I'll be moving over onto the Skeleton Archers here in a moment with these uh, other Spearmen. 
So Boris is going to be going back here. He's down to 955 HP. He is incredibly low. So I realized I need to get rid of this Blessed Legion. I've kind of defended my back line to a, whatever point I could, right? And here we just have a pit fight. We have a warrior priest kind of leading a, a very beleaguered uh, bastion here of the Empire. The spearmen are at 69 models. That's what she said. And I mean, they're, they're doing the best they can. The warrior priest definitely helps quite a bit, giving that encouragement. The banner of the Eternal Flame and all these different buffs are very, very useful there. But there's going to be a flank coming in of Skeleton Spearmen. These guys are going to rear charge my uh, guys here. And they're already low in leadership. They're at 33. So this will put them down to like 15 or 12. Ooh, that, is, that is definitely going to be tough. Oh, we're winning on this side of the battlefield. You can see Boris, as well as the Spearmen, the Great Swords are finally able to true through these troops. We also had enough, uh, another group of Great Swords coming from the uh, Deep Route over here, and they're able to charge in with an Empire Knight charge coming in. And uh, we're going to be crumbling that Blessed Legion of Demonetization. So definitely some good stuff. On that same note, the Cannon Crews, I'm kind of uh, teasing a little bit. I'm like pushing them in, running them back to their cannons. Every time I do that, my opponent does react pretty quickly by sending these skeleton spears to make sure I don't actually get on the cannons. But we should be able to get on the Hammer of the Witches over here as well as the second cannon and maybe be able to move them away and start shooting them again. But anyways, we clean up the archers completely. So that's really good for Boris because now he's not going to be taking that steady damage. You can see since we last looked, he's healed about 400 or 500 HP. So he's in pretty good shape. And it looks like the Warrior Priest and Boris and this Light Wizard, who's also going to be giving a fat Baronus Time Warp right here, which is going to give 26 melee attack to all these troops. It's hitting everyone. The Warrior Priest, it's hitting the Spearmen here, it's hitting the uh, Light Wizard, Boris, Great Swords. That was just a beautiful cast right there. So the Empire Knights are going to break off finally. Definitely have paid their dues. Only 39 uh, kills, but they caused a lot of pressure initially, bought me some time, and did get into that Archer line pretty efficiently. So one of the cannons is back online, the Hammer of the Witches, the other great cannon crew is going to be coming back, and at this point it's mainly just going to be clean up, as the skeletons are, you know, pretty sturdy, right? They have 87 models here, but, you know, with Boris here, a Light Wizard, a fairly healthy group of spears, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to bring these guys down. And that's going to be all she wrote for the Tomb King, so very well played to my opponent, that was an incredibly fun game. I really like these desert maps, because it gives you all of the excuses to use those artillery builds, which are so fun. Because most maps have, like, some line of sight blocking, but these ones, like, this is about as open field as it gets, I mean... Maybe you could like hide behind these dunes over here a little bit. I know, let's take a look. No, I feel like the cannons would probably still get you. So yeah, well played my opponent. Very fun thematic battle in the desert versus Cetra, the Imperishable with the mighty Toadbringer himself. And yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good build. It's very similar to what we saw in the uh, Ever Chosen when Aerocrastic brought the uh, Triple Flame Cannon against the Gobble King and he used the Warrior Priest to burn down uh, Count Noxlos in like the first 30 seconds of the game. So, so yeah, it's, it's a really fun style of play for sure. And that's a Venom Talk. Uh, it's always pretty useful against the big constructs. Uh, Tomb Kings, of course, have a lot of powerhouse units, and they can go super wide, but, uh, you know, oftentimes most people are going to go with some Construct play, so having the Nets is quite valuable there. Empire Knights did their job. I don't think I needed much more. I mean, Reichsguard might have done a little bit more damage, but for their role, which was just to disrupt and uh, cause a little bit of pressure, I think the Empire Knights did a good job, so... So yeah, it's a pretty fun build for sure. And uh, yeah, as far as my opponent's build go, there's a couple changes I would make. Um, Cetra on the big mount is pretty vulnerable to the focus fire. Uh, granted, there are ways around it. You can bring like a ton of carrying and different things like that. But let's actually go ahead and take a look at the Tomb Kings. And I'm going to show you guys what I think would be, a, a, or what build I would bring against the Empire. But honestly, it is a good build. I mean, Mshapti Great Bows are pretty good against the Empire Heavy Cav and Flying Lords. Skeleton Archers are very good against, you know, they can trade efficiently with hand gunners. They're good at sniping down Lords as well. Tomb Guard Infantry will beat almost all state troops. Oh, lose to, you know, uh, great swords in a very minor fashion, but still you can make up for that with your other magic and supporting elements. So he has a lot of good core here to his army. There's a couple minor tweaks I would make. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So first things first, let's go ahead and jump over here to the uh, multiplayer custom lobby. We're going to take a look at the Tomb Kings and we're going to take a look at uh, the Empire matchup. So uh, you can go with Cetra or you can go with Ark in the Black. They're both pretty good choices. Honestly, I think that uh, Katep probably isn't the best. Uh, characters like Boris can really snipe him out pretty aggressively. And Kalita's kind of, you know, just one of the weaker choices. So for the sake of this video, we're going to be talking about the stronger pick. So Ark in the Black is probably, he's probably has a bit of a better niche than Cetra in this matchup, simply because of Fade Abuna being really good against Heavy Cav and also being able to summon those skeletons is good. But Cetra is really good here as well. So you can go on the Chariot if you want. The Chariot is, a uh, you know, pretty powerful in its own right. You can run through the Great Swords, but I think Horseback is good because he gets anti-large and armor piercing here, which makes him a little bit better against those big, powerful Empire Lords. As far as spells go, I'd probably cut these three. Um, although the the desiccation is pretty good. I mean, so maybe you get that for the front line. And uh, yeah, I think this kit is pretty strong. Narrows is really good. Uh, Incantation of Cursed Blades is super powerful for dueling. And this one's going to be good. And those were like really pitched pit fights, right? So he's going to be on horseback. The uh, Blessed Blade is pretty good. And yeah, I mean, he's expensive, but he definitely hits like a truck. I mean, if Boris comes down to fight him and you pop the Blessed Blade and some of his other buffs, he'll give Boris the business super hard. Top of that, I do like the Tomb Guard pick in the front line. You can mix in the Kepra Guard. Those guys actually trade pretty efficiently. And from here, you can even, you know, just get like super wide with like skeleton spears, right? Or just regular skeletons, just chaff. 
So uh, it's really important. I do like the Ushapti Great Bow play. It's a little bit risky against the cannons, but they just pay such huge dues against the knights. But more importantly, you want to get a couple of carrion. Uh, the carrion are super good at disrupting the silver bullets, uh, hammer the witches. Like you can jump them on the cannons and sometimes you can break off the crews like super quick. So I think that carrion play is really, really important here. So that's going to be kind of the main core of the army here. So on top of that, you can get a couple skeleton archers. I mean, they do well, uh, but let's just go with some Ushapti Great Bows. So I do like the Ushapti Great Bows. It's a little bit risky, but if you keep them far enough back, in your initial deployment, you see they have cannons. You wait till you can disrupt the cannons and you move them in to pick off the Empire Knights and the Cab and things like that. They can be really, really powerful. I would probably mix in a couple of groups of uh, Nekar Horsemen just to do a little bit of harass. Now, you don't want to fight the Empire Cab like heads up, but when there is an opening to rear charge some infantry or get into the back line a little bit, I think they're going to be uh, very, very useful, right? So I probably want to go with like too many traditional constructs. I feel like you're probably going to be fine with like your Tomb Guard and different things like that. I mean, you could mix in like one Tomb Scorpion, something like that could be pretty good, or even one group of Necropolis Knights with Halberds to uh, fight off the uh, Heavy Cav. So, I mean, maybe you can mix one of these guys in and just like, yeah, you could cut like a Carrion or something. This could be pretty good. Although the Triple Cannon, yeah, that's like, it's pretty tough to take out. I think just going like super wide is going to be like the better better option here because if they do go with Heavy Cav, your Shopty Great Bow should be able to take them down. You have Setra for Anti-Large as well. And uh, yeah. Probably going to want to cut this guy and mix in a couple skeleton spears. I'm just like thinking out loud as we go through here and, uh, you know, take a look at everything. So uh, the Tomb Scorpions are pretty hard to take out as well. Those guys can definitely cause some serious problems, but I keep looking for like dire wolves. But if you do play the followers of Nagash, you actually can get access to the uh, dire wolves here. So uh, I think, yeah, just maybe like more pressure in regards to infantry. So we'll get the uh, the King Nakesh's Scorpion Legion. So these guys, you can leave a couple back to defend the uh, or just leave the Scorpion Legion to defend the Great Bows. And then from here, you can even get like a couple more skeletons. Just going like super wide is stressful for the Empire in general. But you're going to be able to do well in the frontline infantry fight. You just swarm around the flanks with skeletons. You're pressuring the car horsemen. You're shooting their heavy cap here. Carrying or going after the artillery. And, and yeah, it's going to be tough regardless, but I think that could be pretty fun. So again, very well played to my opponent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, Tomb King versus Empire showdown. And we will see you guys next time. Take care.